Welcome to Security Education Through the Art of Storytelling. You know, I only agreed to do this keynote because I thought I got to pick my own walk on music, but then they told us it had to be royalty free, so. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, like Kaylin said, I'm Ann Wallace. Um, I am currently the Director of Security Education at Okta. Uh, I live in the Pacific Northwest and I spend a lot of time trail running with my dog Cedar in the mountains here. Um, so today we're going to briefly talk about storytelling, then I'll get into how to craft a story and to tell it, and then I will talk about how I'm applying all this in the security education program at Okta. So first up, storytelling. So what is storytelling? So storytelling is the art of using words and actions to convey a narrative to an audience. It includes oral, written, visual, digital forms, and serves purposes like entertainment, education, and cultural preservation. It's a powerful way to connect and share experiences and influence thoughts and emotions. So we all tell stories all the time, even if we don't realize it. So you've probably met people at the conference this week and maybe you told them what you got up to last night or maybe you told them how you're spending the weekend in Seattle this weekend to, to go to the Pride Parade. Um, we also do things like through, we tell stories through anecdotes, so small and amusing interesting stories about real incidents and people. We use jokes and humor and even our social media posts and updates are stories. We retell events and create stories because it's a powerful way to communicate and trigger feeling, feelings and attention from audience and listeners. This is how we connect with one another. People become emotionally invested. People feel something. So you probably you saw my picture a couple slides ago and you noticed I had a dog or that I was running, wearing running or hiking clothes. So maybe we're talking later on and you tell me about how you go hiking with your dog. And then I would probably then tell you what happened after this picture was taken. So we were in a mountain run, mid run. We stopped, took this little selfie. I then took my backpack off, put it down, bent over, pulled out my burrito. And I had my phone in one hand, burrito in the other hand. I'm bending over like this. My dog Cedar then runs, knocks me over. The phone and burrito go flying. My friend that I'm running with is laughing her ass off. The dog gets the burrito, eats the burrito. And ever since then, he's been known as the burrito thief. So me telling you about the burrito thief maybe made some of you laugh. Laughter produces positive emotions like amusement, happiness, and joy. Laughter creates bonds and increases intimacy with others. This is why public speakers and comedians try to get a laugh from audiences to make them feel psychologically closer to them and create intimacy. So you might not remember my name next week or two weeks from now or my dog's name, but you'll probably remember the burrito thief. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself on the storytelling part of this. So let's get into how to tell and craft a story. So what makes a good story? There's a lot of formulas and opinions out there. There's TED Talks, there's articles, there's books. Um, what I'm gonna tell you is something that just works for me. So a lot of this I learned working for a branding company for 14 years, also a sportswear company known as Nike. Um, even if you don't wear Nike, you've probably been pulled in by one of their ads. Nike tells stories of people doing the impossible. They're really good at knowing their audience, pulling them in, making an emotional connection, and making folks care and remember. And this, in a nutshell, is the formula I use. So I'm going to break it down in the next couple slides. So first, there is the art of crafting the story. So you always have the characters. So you have a hero and a villain. You want to introduce those characters and then a setting. So for me, I was a hero, oops, and Cedar was the villain. And his opinion might be different than mine, but then there's the journey, the hero's journey. There's conflict. How do your characters approach it? You want to build that tension, develop the conflict. The conflict was I had a burrito to eat for lunch and Cedar didn't. The dog was hungry and wanted food and saw an opportunity. Opportunity. Then there's the resolution, the ending. How did they resolve the conflict? How did they wrap it up? He stole my burrito, got food, I didn't. Um, I lost that journey. Not all stories have a happy ending, though it was pretty happy for Cedar. And then lessons learned. Provide a closure, wrap up that story. So the lesson learned was don't underestimate a hungry dog. So now that you have the story, how do you tell the story? So some of this is similar to crafting the story, but first and most importantly, you need to know your audience. You really need to understand your audience is critical. Um, so I probably wouldn't have told this story at a cat conference, yet I did tell a dog story at a security conference, so who knows. Um, but you want to understand your audience's background, expertise, why are they there? 
identify their interests and concerns, and then you want to pull them in and make that emotional connection. Engage your audience by the start from creating that connection. Be authentic, and again, incorporate emotions, excitement, joy, surprise. It builds that connection with your audience. And then you want to make folks care. So make your audience care by, again, highlighting relevant scenarios, relatable scenarios, and characters. Ask questions. Make eye contact. This keeps the audience involved. And again, give them something to remember. What are those key takeaways? As you're telling your story with key takeaways, you might need to be, repeti be repetitive because repetition helps with recall. And so do visuals and analogies. All right, cool. So we've talked about the storytelling, so let's get into how we're applying this, the security education program at Okta. So again, how does this apply to security education? So I thought about this a lot, everything I just talked about in the first couple minutes when I took the job at Okta about a year ago. I really wanted to create trainings and learning sessions for our engineers that they wanted to attend, or at least didn't roll their eyes at. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about what doesn't work well. So as you look through the following images, what emotions do they provoke? So I went through and looked at a lot of royalty-free images trying to find things that convey bad security training. I came across a lot of these finger characters talking about security. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about them. Maybe they're evolution of Clippy, but we know how well Clippy went over. Um, and then this image, it doesn't necessarily convey security training, but in my, over the course of my career, I've had a lot of corporate training, security trainings, where there's people dressed in suits. I'm in tech, I work on the West Coast, I don't dress like this. I don't see anyone in the audience dressed like this. You need to have images that people can see themselves in. Now this particular image, we probably can see ourselves here. Hopefully all of us have had, you know, fun conversations with coworkers in an office, on Zoom, at a conference, at an offsite. But a lot of times security trainings will have this fun atmosphere. And then next, they have this hacker, always in a black hoodie, doing something malicious and evil, like stealing their data. And then the next scene is people are scared. Like, why do we need to use fear in security trainings? Do we really want to make our employees afraid? I mean, obviously security is, you know, a serious topic, but do we have to use fear to get the point across? Then you have trainings that have these random like cartoon characters that just really don't mean anything. I mean, have we ever seen somebody run down the road with a bag of money? And for me, when I look at this image of the person with the USB stick, I just think about deodorant, not viruses on a USB stick. And then the matrix-like images with locks, can we finally get rid of these things? I mean, does this always have to convey security? Anyway, so I think you get my point. Like, you need to use images that people can relate to, that they see themselves in, that you're not just going to roll your eyes at. All right, so now we'll get into how we're approaching storytelling and security education at Okta. So like I said, I got hired a year ago and started the security education team. There was a team that took care of this a couple years before my team, but they had quit in 2022 and they didn't backfill until mid-2023. So one of the first things my boss said was, hey, you need to update our secure code training, which was essentially just OS top 10 training. And I wanted to make this engaging. So I really like this quote a lot, and I thought about it a lot when I was thinking about how we were going to create our trainings. Yet. I just dove in and started creating freaking trainings. And I knew better, yet I still did this. I created a bunch of trainings with slide decks and me, me talking, which that's fine, but they're not engaging. I mean, people will get the point, but they're just going to want to fast forward through it. And nobody wants to see me all the time. <laughs> um, so I went back to this quote, and going back to this quote and really thinking about how good stories surprise and make us think and feel, we rethought our approach. And when I say we, there are two of us. So rethinking our approach, we started to think about branding, what we wanted to deliver to engineering and how. First, like I said, we needed to rebuild that secure code training, which was based on the OWASP Top 10. Instead of focusing on OWASP Top 10, we decided to focus on what we call the Okta Top 10. So the top 10 vulnerabilities that we're finding at Okta through code reviews and other methods. And we use real code examples and mediation, mitigations at Okta so people could see the code they're working on, how it got fixed. And then we wanted to create a brand um, and bring security culture into that. So when people saw our trainings, they knew it came from us and not because it was a, my image with a slide deck. 
And then we wanted to keep the video short because people have a short attention span. So we didn't have a lot of time to tell a full blown story. So we use a lot of humorous metaphors. And then we try to keep the content as evergreen as possible so it was easier to maintain. None of what I'm saying is groundbreaking, but doing this in a relatable way isn't always easy. So this next slide, there's a lot of text. I'm not gonna read it to you, but this is the first page of the style guide that we came up with. And like I said, we wanted to create a brand, and one of the priorities of the product security team is to create an inclusive security culture at Okta. So our style is based on a vision of fun, and engaging what we call hacker culture at Okta, using elements and themes from the worlds of gaming, sci-fi, and online culture. So we created a bunch of characters we called the devs. So they represent fictitious uh, development teams and security teams at Okta. They are diverse in ethnicity, age, and gender. And then we created some other characters that play certain reoccurring roles with our devs and our different security trainings. All these characters show up in different scenes and locations, helping ground security lessons in reality. And of course, there's a coffee shop because we know coffee shops are the most insecure networks in the world. And then we have different devices in the, the different scenarios. So I think you see where I'm going with some of this fun 8-bit stuff. So what does all this look like? Now, I don't have enough time to show you one of our full training videos. Um, so the next slide, I have put together a few things. It's our intro, and then it's a scene of somebody trying to get into a club or some other show or event, and it shows different, how different authentication issues can happen. And then it builds into our secrets management training. So this is just about a minute. Greetings and welcome to the OWASP and Okta Top 10 Training. Missing authentication is the most obvious issue, where either no authentication is required at all, or there is improper authentication within an application. Brute forcing can occur if there's no proper rate limiting, account lockout, or proper password policies that prevent easy to guess and short passwords from being used. Lastly, credential stuffing is the process in which an adversary has access to compromised credentials from one site and tries them on other sites. It's the Company Hackathon. Angie and Mick are collaborating remotely on a project together. It's an identity service for pets. Pets can use their paws to authenticate via pet doors to let themselves in and out. Angie set up a database and wanted to share the password with Mick. So she sent it over via Slack. So you see where this one's going. Um, so cool. Um, if you have questions, I'll be around. Let's keep in touch. There's Twitter X, whatever. And, and I, on, I talked to a lot of people yesterday, and all of us follow each other in Strava, so I felt like I should have updated this with Strava, too. But anyways, thank you. Um, and that's it. Yeah.